So far we have proved logically that there must be a necessary existent which began everything else and we have also distinguished it from its creation. There are attributes which are positive attributes which are true and some are negating attributes which are not true for a necessary existent. So far we have proven some of the attributes of this necessary existent such as it is independent and the first cause. It also has no beginning and no end and is eternal. We have proven that it cannot be made up of physical parts. It cannot have a body. It also cannot be bound by time and space. It also cannot have intellectual parts or an intellectual definition. So what does that mean? It means we can negate and destroy the definition in our minds. For example, we say H2O as in water. If I take out the O oxygen in my mind, we won't have water anymore. I would have destroyed that definition. An intellectual definition can only be given to something that is made up of parts. The books of philosophy and the books of theology describe the attributes of this necessary being using two particular headings. First is the attributes of essence and then the second is the attributes of action. Most important attributes of essence are life, power and knowledge. But how do we prove this? The simple proof is that when these attributes are used for any creation, they refer to their perfections. For example, if a necessary existent does not have life, therefore it cannot give life. If a necessary existent does not have power, then it cannot give power. But as we see in creation there is life, power and knowledge, then it becomes necessary that this necessary existent must have these positive attributes in a superior and perfect form that never diminishes. This necessary being is distinguished from all of its creation and we name him Allah which means the being who comprises all the attributes of perfection.